Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Rev. Osei Kovna. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We bless the name of the Lord for another opportunity to be at his feet. And we have every cause to honor him and to glorify him. For he is the most high God. Thank you for your presence here. And we welcome you into this session. Amen. Now, today we have an interesting subject. You carry a unique ID. You have a unique identity. Unique identity. And we want to examine the scriptures and see how we walk about with this unique identity that make us stand out in heaven and on the earth. Hallelujah. In these modern days, states and nations have national IDs, which capture features like pic photographs, <clears throat> thumbprints, eyelids, names, date of birth, etc., there are many features on these IDs, but they all point to the individual person, individual, wherever you are. You have some unique features about you, and they are captured to give you an identity on the earth here. Mm. And in a similar way, or in the same way, when you are born again, the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Second Corinthians chapter number five, verse number seventeen. Therefore, you are when you are a new creature, you are born of God. Oh, behold, all things are become new. You have a unique ID. You have been identified, and this is why the Scripture says, "Please let get to Revelation chapter number." 21 and verse 27. I love that scripture. Yes. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abominable, or maketh a liar. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb book of life, the Lamb book of life, there are some names written in the Lamb's book of life. And these give people unique identity. When you are born of God, in fact, when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you accept him as your personal savior, immediately something unique happened. Heaven take notice of your faith and your belief and confession of Jesus as Lord while you are on earth here. And as you do it genuinely, Heaven recognized that somebody is born from sin unto righteousness. He crossed over from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And these things happen in the realm of a spirit. So you are recognized in heaven. And your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Somebody said, by what? By the blood of a lamb. There's this song we used to sing in key. I can. Watch me thee. Yesu di ni moja, o bi rin tu mi mpupa, e wo ho, afibo. You see, my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life by the blood of a lamb. And no man can wash it away. It gives me a unique identity. In heaven, I am known. I am known by my name. I am known... That I am a believer. What happens? Listen, there's something very unique. Let's look, let, let's look into the scripture. When Jesus was born, he was God who became man. So he, he started from the spirit and he came to inhabit human body. Okay? So, what happened? Luke chapter number 2. Let's take the verse number 13 and 14. Luke 30, chapter 2. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, 
Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace and goodwill toward men. Christ was born. He came to take on human body. Angels came on earth here to celebrate with him at his birth. So that day when I was born again, heaven recognized me right there. The same way. Because, listen, unlike Christ, he was given human body. And listen, and unlike me, I received the spirit of God coming to dwell in me. Hallelujah. And Christ have a celebration on earth here. Angels came here. And I have celebration. When I was born again, the Bible said, angels celebrate in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to grasp it. it is, you see, we don't value what God has done for us. We don't see it worth. Until he appears, we will know who, know who he will become. But this is it. Heaven celebrate my birth. And that day when I was born again, become my new birth. Date of birth. In heaven, my name was written in the Lamb Book of Life. I've crossed over from sin to, that, to righteousness. And I'm a child of God, born of God. Hallelujah. And glory to God in the higher. So there's a celebration that goes on because I am born of God. And angels celebrate. When you look at Luke chapter number 15, this is what it says. Luke 15, 7 and 10. And I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Ten. Likewise I say unto you that rejoice in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. When Jesus was born into the natural, he came to take human body and he came to celebrate. When I am born into the spiritual, when I receive the spirit of Christ, angels celebrate in heaven. Hallelujah. And I want you to know this is our state. And I have a unique ID. Heaven knows me. Hallelujah. You are known in heaven. You are known in the realm of a spirit. You are recognized. I said, who are you? You are a child of God. You are born of God. Yes, I am born of God. Heaven knows it. And that day I received the seal of God upon my life. When I was born, I got heaven's approval that this belonged to God. Mm. There are two scriptures I want you to consider. Hallelujah. Ah. When you read Galatians chapter number 4 verse 6. Galatians chapter 4 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And because he has son, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Because I am born of God. I am born of God. God has placed his spirit upon me that I belong to him. Because I am a son of God, I have a spirit. In fact, when you read Romans 8 and then verse 9, Romans 8 and then, let, let's take the verse number 9. Romans 8 verse 9. This is very interesting. Mm. But ye are not of the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if anyone have the spirit of Christ, he is now coming in the head. He belongs to him. If you don't have a spirit, you are none of his. You are outside of a kingdom. You cannot see it. You cannot enter. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus who have made a way for us. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I have got a unique identity. I have got a name. And my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. <laughs> Heaven has recorded my name in this holy book. And thank God for this. This is our hope. This is our joy. The celebration of angels are going on because my name is in there. And I have ever cause to praise him. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. Let's move on. Mm. You see, when you carry this identity and you walk around, in the natural, people may see you like one of them. But in the realm of our spirit, you are different. Hallelujah. Say with somebody, I'm different. I am different. I am born of God. I have his spirit. I have his life. I belong to him. I am a child of God. I am different. He said, how are you different? Yes. 
<laughs> I am known. My name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. I belong to God. Mm. Hallelujah. There is this scripture. Look at Mark chapter number 1 and then verse 24. Jesus went to the church and some demons started screaming. Let's have from the 13, 23. Let's have from 23. And there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, uh -huh, saying, let us alone. What are we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Are thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Brother, how could these demon spirits know who Jesus is? Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> that is his name. Jesus of all. Nazareth. I know who thou art. Jesus of Nazareth. Are you come to destroy us? Listen, very interesting when you hear this. But how, what, what is going on? What is happening? To those around naturally, they see nothing. They see the son of Mary with them. They could not see anything. But in the realm of a spirit, the demon spirit had discerned that Christ, is the person who is standing there beyond the face, in the spirit, he is Jesus of Nazareth, the son of the Holy One of God. He is the son of God. And they recognize it. What am I saying? Brother, that is his identity. He carries human identity walking here. But in the realm of the spirit, he is the Christ, the son of a living God. And demons know it. They recognize it. They respect him because they knew who he is. Hallelujah. I'm praying that you begin to know who you are. You are born of God. You have the spirit and life of Christ in you. And demons scream because they recognize who you are. Hallelujah. Now, it's interesting. And now Jesus commanded it to come out. Let the 25. Let's see the 25. Mm -hmm. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold our peace and come out of him. Kill that piece and keep, come out of him. He said, he just cast that demon out. Praise the Lord. Let us get to another scenario in eight, Luke, Matthew 8, 29. Mm. You are born of God, you can hide your identity. No more hiding. Kaboria, la rea la la. Jekomoziba kaba. And behold, they cried out, saying, what are we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God? Had not come in there to torment us before the time. They knew they would be tormented. But they think the time was not up. Jesus was too early. <laughs> Hallelujah. He rebuked it and cast that one also out. You see, what am I trying to get to? You carry an identity in the realm of a spirit. The demon spirits know who you are. And heaven knows who you are. Praise the Lord. When you are born of God and you have a spirit of Christ in you, you are recognizing heaven and in hell. You are known. And because this is who you are, you need to live up to expectation. Hallelujah. When you are a child of God, you don't behave like the child of the devil. When you say you are born of God, you need to hold up to that identity. Because, listen, it's a privilege and honor to be called a child of God. To be brought into that position where God himself has said, I will be your God and you will be my sons. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, from 14 to 18. God is our father and we are his sons. And if God himself declared that he is our father and we are his sons, then we have to hold up, hold yourself up. Beyond reproach. Because you are a prince. Prince of a king of kings. Prince of a kingdom. And you need to behave and hold up yourself. You cannot live anyhow. You are born of God. This is who you are. Hallelujah. And it's interesting. When you walk around, brother, sister, hear me. You are a believer. 
They know who you are. Don't pretend that they don't know you. It's a mistake you make. Hallelujah. Many people, nobody knows me. Who told you nobody knows you? You deceive yourself. You are deceiving yourself. You don't know. In the realm of our spirit, you are known. You can't pretend anymore. You have crossed over from darkness into light. The spirit of God is in you. And on your forehead, you are glow. The light of Christ shines in you. And the Bible says, ye are the light of the world. I want you to know in the realm of our spirit, we glitter in glory. We shine. This is who we are. This is the spirit and the life of Christ in us. Let your life shine. It is not just worse there. It is reality. You are born of God. You have a spirit. You have this life. You are glow in the realm of a spirit. You walk in there. I could remember those days where 31st night and on the street side, we're having some crusade. 31st night. Yes. In Sunyani here. And the mama, mama was standing somewhere. And one man came in there. And when the prayer and the worship and all those going on, he came in there and then he told mama, I need that light, that light that is on your forehead. You see, he was not seeing any light, but this person could see light are glowing and he came in that darkness. Said, I need, I also need that light which is in you. Brother, this is who we are. We have been born very unique. They know Christ. And they know who he is. Let me give you another example. The sons of Sceva. Mm. When you look at <clears throat> Acts chapter number 19. You see the sons of Sceva. They came in there and they were bragging. Mm. They wanted to use false identity to cast out spirit. And now they said... <laughs> Are you there? Sons of Sceva, okay. 19, Acts chapter 19. Let's look at the verse number 15, 14, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. And there were seven sons of Sceva, one Sceva, a Jew, and a chief of a priest, which they saw. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? You see, these people were pure sinners. And they wanted to use the identity of Paul. So they called in there, these by Jesus, and then they, they want to cast out demon spirits by... <laughs> when you get to the verse 30, you, let, let's get to the 30, we'll get it right. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, Ezos, took upon themselves to call over them, which had an evil spirit, the name of, of our Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. What they were saying was truth, but it was from the wrong person. You, come on, you have no dealings with the kingdom of God, but you wanted to use the power of the kingdom. Hear me. If you are not born of God, if you are not come into that relationship, you cannot utilize the name of Jesus Christ and do your own thing and go scot free. And this demon got angry. Who are you? Who are you? We are in the same kingdom and he has power over you. And you want to cast us out because he has power preaching in that great name. So all they did, who are you? Who are you? They just bounced on him. Go to the verse 14. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know. But who are you? Who are you, there? And the man in whom the evil spirit leap was leap on them and overcame them and prevailed against them. Seven sons. And this man, God, why? By those spirits. And he destroyed them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Uh, uh, I, 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 are you getting me? You have no dealings with the kingdom of God, but you want to use his name. 
and the demon spirit will not allow you. You are under that demon spirit. But you wanted to cast him in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches. It's a truth and a fact you know, but you are not relating to it. I want you to know, if you don't relate, if you are not born into the kingdom, you cannot just use the name for your benefit and do what you want. That name is sacred. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a, no name given among men by which we can be saved. He is given us his holy name. And anyone who believes and repents and turns from his own sin and believes in his name, God save. You cannot just use it anyhow. So this demon spirit bounced on them, wounded them, destroyed them. The Bible said they ran away naked. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the people got afraid. And they reverenced the name of the Lord. What am I sharing it now? Now listen. If you are born of God, you cross over from darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You got his identity. As you walk around, no more, nobody may pinpoint it to you. But I have some experience. Listen. There was a time I'm going to see one of my elders, the elder in church in Helsinki. I visited them. I'm going to see them off. They were coming to Ghana. I was there. So we went to the airport at Helsinki. And I was standing about 20 meters away from the counter because I cannot speak that language. Ah, I can't finish language. I could not speak it. So I was there far away. And then they went in there to, for the check-in. As they were going, the woman at the counter saw me standing far there. And he saw us coming together. And he told them, that man is a pastor. Brother, I had not dressed for my, like you see me in a clerical and anything religious. No. I just normal somebody with my jacket because of the weather. And we went together in those jackets and those things. So they were... But this woman could just see me far there and he said, this man is a pastor. So how could he know? I wasn't surprised. I don't know what spirit he's made of, but he can, he can be a Christian. He cannot be a Christian. He may have some type of spirit, but he has seen me in the realm of a spirit. What am I saying? You carry a unique identity. That is who you are. You are born of God. You have come into the kingdom. You are known. Don't pretend like you are not known, brother. You, <laughs> you pass from the kingdom of that into the kingdom of the dear son. You are a child of God. You are known. So, and he said, but I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised. Because I work for people who have those gifts, discerning of spirits. And they also tell me, you guys could remember, we're in there with my, we're in Accra, we met a certain white man who had visited here. And we saw him, so this you see that man, that white man here, he's also a witch. White man witch, mm -hmm. that will be the last thing. You think only black people are witches. Hard man traveled to Africa, he's a witch. You see, what am I saying? When your eyes are open and you see in the realm of a spirit, you have a discerning of spirit, and all types of people are there. The good and the bad. The bad and the ugly. All types of spirits. They are in there manifesting. But this is the kingdom in which we have come. And we have a power and authority and dominion over all these foul spirits. And we reign in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said we will reign by faith and righteousness. The gift of righteousness. Because listen, once we walk in righteousness, we have relationship with our father. And his spirit is upon us. And the devil knows it. Hallelujah. When we walk in faith and obedience, they will bow. Because the Bible says he placed them under our feet. This is who we are. This is your unique identity. Your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. You are known in heaven. Hallelujah. You see, you walk through many airports. And you get in there these days because of these Electronic and these security matters. Your features have been captured when you went for in for visa. So you get in, you put in your feature. Ba, 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 ba. And everything about you is now there. In fact, if you've been traveling regularly, when you put in your features, 
It comes out that then they will show you, go to that place and check out. Check out. No immigration officer comes. No, they don't have to come to you. They know everything about you. Don't worry. They have all your information about you. So <laughs> you go in there, put your passport there, do it, and then you go. How? They have all your features. They know everything about you. They know they are satisfied with you. They don't worry themselves about you. Now listen, what am I saying? When you are known, this is what is happening in the natural, in the spirit realm. When you are known and you are walking in righteousness and you are walking in faith and in obedience to God, the Bible says you will cast out devils. When your obedience is fulfilled, when you walk in righteousness and obey the will and the purpose of God, and you walk in there, Second Corinthians chapter 10, reading from verse number 10 to 3 to 6, you will find out, wow, when your obedience has been fulfilled, yeah, you are righteous. You are right with God. It means I have right relationship with him. I have access into his grace and in his power and in his name. There are manifestations and the glory of the Son of God. And I walk in there to do the will of God and no man can stop me. Because God is on my side. He has said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So if we are about the kingdom business and we are out there doing the will of God, who is that person? Who can stop us? Hallelujah. You are walking in righteousness. You are walking in the will of God. You hold that unique identity. It means heaven recognized you. <laughs> and the devil knows you. And he knows he cannot stand. If you are not that compromiser. Hmm? And you are a believer. Standing in grace. And in the power of his spirit. And that you are anointed for these assignments. Brother, the enemy must bow, whether he like it or not. Because he has said, I will burn my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. And you are there for this unique assignment. The person doing that is called of God. He's recognized in heaven. His name is in the Lamb Book of Life. And the power and the ministry angels of God follow him. And the devil knows it and he bows. He recognizes and gives you respect and honor. This is who you are. I come in your way. Please, please, don't sell your birthright. We easily compromise because we have need. Don't be like Esau, who was hungry for a while. And because he was hungry, he sold his birthright. Obey the Lord. Follow his teaching and instruction. Submit to him. And now, the demon spirit and the spirit world will recognize you. And you will do your assignment. They may turn against you, but they cannot prevail. That is the word of the Lord. It is written, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. So, if you have a kingdom business, you may encounter challenges. But hear me. The promise is that he has said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. Once you have that right identity. Once you are connected with him. Once his spirit and grace is released upon your life. Go ahead. For your assignment. Overcome them. Put them under your feet. That is what is written of thee. They shall be under your feet. You will overcome them. That is the promise of God. This is who you are. Now, brethren, you have this unique identity. Your uniqueness have linked you to heaven. The kingdom of heaven gives you the backing. Your authority is derived from the king of kings and lord of lords. And he has visited you and given his spirit unto you. And as you wait on him, the unction of the Lord have come over thee. No weapon, therefore, that is formed against thee shall prosper. No evil imagination, every plot against you shall prevail. For thou art called of God. And you are walking in righteousness. Doing your assignment and business. 
You are about to fight that business and no weapon of the enemy shall prevail. In the name of the Lord, you will overcome. Hear me, somebody. He said, Pastor, I don't know. I'm not thinking about what you know. I'm thinking about what you believe. I'm thinking about what God has declared in his word. I'm thinking about what the scripture has said. This is where we stand. It is not about what we feel, what is going on around. No, 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 no. We are not like the sons of Sceva. We are the children of the most high God. The demon knows it and they recognize it. They know your name. They know your house address. They must pay respect because you obey the father. Because you walk in righteousness. Because you hold integrity. Because you are a child of promise. Yes. And your assignment shall be fulfilled. Hear me. You cannot just be there and they will be messing around. Let them do what they want. But when you come, there should be order. When you come, it's like light shine and darkness must go. That's who you are. You come and the light of Christ will shoot up and darkness must flee. You come in there and things will fall in place. Things will work out because you are there. Yeah. He has said he will build it and he will use you. Thank God you are a vessel of honor. Now let me give you the last one on Saul. So, he had rebelled and God had rejected him. <laughs> so he went to these two men, a wizard. Ah, uh, make consultation. First Samuel chapter number 28. And let's read from verse number 6. And when Saul so inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams nor by urim, nor by prophets. Then so, said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that have a familiar spirit, mm -hmm, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that have a familiar spirit. I want you to know this is not my soldier for the day. But listen, the truth is that if you are out there inquiring, inquiring, and if there is not a spirit of God, then there is a familiar spirit. And it is not of God. And anyone who goes into consultation with this familiar spirit are bound to the enemy. You become a child of the devil. Mm -hmm. That I may go to her and inquire. And a servant said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that have a familiar spirit at end of. Mm -hmm. And so disguise himself. Yes. Many disguise themselves in the night and put up on them raiment. And he went. And two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, devour unto me the familiar spirit. And bring me up <laughs> whom I, I, I shall name unto thee. Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul have done. How he have cut off those that have familiar spirits. And the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? And so swear to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, thou shalt not, thou shalt not punish, no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It's interesting. He, he, he had went out for consultation, this guy himself. How many people in the darkness, the cover of darkness, went out for consultation and trying to do things that way? Their own way. Many, 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 many people, great people in society. But that is not of God, it's the spirit of the enemy. You went to many places, the consultation, and then they tell you many, many, many things. You know many, many things, yes. But the truth is that. Because of those sin you have committed. If you don't repent, you are ready for hell. Nobody may tell you, but today, hear this. Those who are going out there consulting familiar spirits, you are marked for hell. Unless you repent and turn away from your sin, you are already qualified for hell. Moreover, this is the answer. Moreover, the law will also deliver... With Israel with thee into the hand of a Philistine. And tomorrow 
thou shalt, thou and thy sons, thy sons be with me, the Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Listen, he said, you and your sons, you, be, you come and join me. Tomorrow you'll be killed. He went for consultation and they told him what was ahead. Hallelujah. So was depressed. And then it happened to him and Jonathan. You see, what am I saying? The truth is this. If you want in these things, they have no help and assistance for you. They may give you information in their spirit, but they can help you. But when you turn to the law, you come into his kingdom. You belong to God. <laughs> he said, I stand before God. Who, who, whose I am? That is Elijah speaking. He said, he's standing before God. When you have the right relationship with him, you become that. Now listen, you have a unique identity. And in Christ, you are born of God. You are a child of God. You have no dealings like this. Now, you say, so can, can God show me things to come? Yes, if you serve him and wash in his way. God may choose to reveal things to come unto thee and you will know them. Hallelujah. I want to pray with you today. Hear me. You want to give your life to Christ? You want his spirit and life to come to you to give you that unique identity. Wherever you go, Thank God I'm a citizen of heaven. I am born of God and I know it. In fact, I know the place where I got born again. I know the place where I experienced this life. It is real. It's not fake. There's no pretense in this. Anyone who is born of God knows it. And he knows he's going to heaven. He's marked for heaven. And he has a spirit and life of Christ dwelling in him. Now you want to give your life to Christ. Bow your head and we pray. Please open your heart and let Christ come into you. Pray this prayer of me. Dear Jesus, I come to you today just as I am. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Lord, please give me this heaven identity and write my name in the Lamb Book of Life. Thank you for saving me. I belong to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. May God keep you and bless you May he preserve your life in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless, God bless you. For having time with the General Overseer, you can follow Reverend Russo Kobana on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233-244-614965. Thank you and God bless you.